Hello, my name is Pastor Mark, and as churches, we have a real critical decision to make. What are we going to do with the condition that's going on in our homes today? And the fact that you know, less than 10% of people can pray in the home, or are reading the Bible in the home, or are doing devotions in the home. And what are we going to do with the fact that almost 8 out of 10 of our current 13 to 18 year olds, when they get to college, are going to leave the faith and, and never come back? Well, we've got some work to do to get back to equipping that home to be the primary place where faith is nurtured. And I want to talk to you for a minute about what it means to be a faith at home driven church. And obviously it's what we have evolved into as a church and it's been something we've been working on for years. I had a chance to do it as a youth and family pastor and now as a senior pastor. And I think there is a significant difference with being a church with, where you just have a family ministry program to where you become a faith at home driven church. And I want to talk to you about six keys of being a faith at home driven church. The first key is what I would call language matters. Now for a while here we were trying to become this faith at home driven church but we were calling it family ministry and it wasn't that it was a bad thing but even though we were trying to explain that everyone's a part of a family the second we use that language of family or that terminology instantly our singles shut it off or people that didn't have kids or empty nesters they thought it wasn't for them and I just couldn't get complete buy-in and we were struggling. But then all of a sudden we made a s subtle change that became a very significant change. We started calling it being a faith at home driven church. And the second we made that little language change, all of a sudden our singles ministry said, oh now we get that. And, and we'd like to be more faith at home driven as a singles ministry because our singles, they don't want to play Christian for an hour. They want to be a Christian 24-7. And now we were able to talk to them about something. They go, that's what I want to do too is be, would you help me live this out in my home? And our seniors ministry could buy in. And they said, we want to be faith at home driven seniors. And so it became something that everybody could buy into. So the first thing that as you get ready to consider how are you going to attack this family and what we're going to do with families today and the condition of the home, I think we need to realize that language matters and I just would encourage you, maybe stay away from that word family and instead use language of being a faith at home driven church. A second key that we discovered was recognize the critical role of the senior pastor. Now I just want to talk heart to heart for a minute as far as what it means to be a senior pastor. We have a lot of things that hit us as senior pastors. I mean everyone's saying we need to be We've got to be more missional as a church. And then I get a brochure that says we have to become small groups oriented. And then, then I get a next one that says that we have to do this in worship. And then I hear a, a prayer magazine that says we've got to become more focused on prayer. And it seems like we're getting inundated with all these different things that we have to be as pastors and what we have to focus on. But, and I realize that, senior pastors. But at the end of the day, what is success for us? And am I okay as a senior pastor with only two out of ten that will be with a faith that, that sticks when they become young adults. I mean I may have built some nice buildings or we have a lot of nice programs that got a lot, a lot of people to our places but is that what ministry is really about? Is about getting people to come to our places for programs? Or is it about changing their lives and helping them live a Christ-like lifestyle 24-7? Well as a senior pastor I just I think it's important for us to get back to saying, I'm not okay with only 20%. And we realize that some things have to change. And it doesn't mean we quit doing programs, but it may mean that we have to look at how we do our programs with a different set of lenses. In other words, success is, doesn't stop with what happens at church. It's not about the numbers of people that we get into our place. But true success is what is transferring to the home. And that is where I think a senior pastor's heartbeat has to be if we're going to be a faith at home driven church is we've got to be willing to re-examine and re-look at, at what is truly successful and, and how, how are we truly making an impact as we lead our ministries forward. Are we equipping that home to be the primary place where faith is nurtured? A third key for being a faith at home driven church is I think it has to be an integrated part of the strategy of the church. Now, now let me be clear. I don't mean it needs to be necessarily in the mission of the church. Most mission statements are something to do with Matthew 28, ours is, to introduce people to a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. And yet our strategy, and I just read the simple church and it talked about it, you need to have a simple strategy. Some churches have 
four bases on a baseball diamond, some have five G's or six Q's or whatever it may be. But when you think of your strategy, that's where faith at home shows up for us. Our strategy to introduce people to a growing relationship with Christ starts with first introducing them to Jesus. It's about you and Jesus. And you've got to make a decision. What are you going to do with Jesus? Do you recognize that He is, wants to be your Lord and Savior and He came to deliver you from your sin? And do you recognize who Jesus is and have you accepted Him as your Lord and Savior? We, we confront people that you have to do. What are you going to do with Jesus? And then once they've made a decision to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, for us the next step is now you and faith at home. What are you going to do now? You, are you going to just hang out with Jesus for an hour on Sundays? Well, that's not a relationship. That's not a growing relationship. That's an acquaintance. If you're going to have a growing relationship with Jesus, you got to bring him into your home. And you got to bring Christ and Christ-like living into your home. And that's where it truly becomes a faith that is impacting and changing your life. And that's what Jesus wants to do. He wants to transform your life. So you got to bring him home. And then once you've established and you've brought Christ and Christ-like living into the home, then the third step in our strategy is you and the church. And now that you have that relationship with Christ and you're living it out in your own home, now let's talk about his bride because he has a bride which is called the church and that's your extended family. And if you want to know Jesus better, get to know the bride better. The bride can tell you all sorts of things about Jesus and, and that's a next layer in your growing relationship. So it's you and Jesus, you and faith at home, then it's you and the church and then the final piece of our strategy is it's now you and the world. Now that you've been in a right relationship with Jesus and you're living them out with him, with him in your home and you've got a relationship with the church, now take that out to the streets, that relationship, and get involved in your community and make a difference. Be used by God to make a difference in your community and all throughout the world, wherever God calls you and leads you to go. And that's kind of our, our missional work. So as you can see, we have a pretty simple strategy, but faith at home is a key part of that strategy. And actually, if you took that piece out, at least what I notice in churches is we're pretty good at introducing people to Jesus. We're pretty good at getting them involved in the church. And we're pretty good at even getting them involved missionally in doing missional work and service work. But if they're not living it out in the home, then a lot of times it's that work that they do at the church becomes just something they have to do. And the service work is, is also just something that they're, they're just doing, but it's not driven from relationship. So I think for a lot of churches, we have good mission statements and we have good strategies, but they're just not driven all the way home. And if you weave faith at home into your strategy, now it's going to make your overall strategy even stronger because it's going to drive it, literally, it's going to drive it home. And then the next key to being a faith at home driven church is what I call a where your treasure is commitment. And we have to be ready to devote resources. A lot of times we pour a lot of our money and resources, I know we do as a church, into resources that you're going to use here at church. Bible studies that you'll do here at church, worship things that you'll do here at church. How much money are we spending on resources that go home, that people can use in the home? I know in our children's ministry we have a take it home strategy where every year we're equipping parents to do something in the home. One year we're teaching them how to bless their kids in the home. One year we're teaching them how to pray in the home. One year we're teaching them how to read the Bible in the home, how to do family service in the home. And every time we do a take it home event, we give every family a resource. So in other words, if we've taught them how to do a blessing of their children in the home, we give them a book on how to continue doing that in the home. If we've taught them that day how to pray in the home, we give them a resource, a book on how to continue to pray in the home. So I know some of you are adding that up on your calculators and going, wow, imagine if we gave all of our families every year a resource that they need to use in the home. That would cost a lot of money. Well, it does. In fact, when we added it up, we're spending about as much money now on resources that are being used in the home as we are spending on Sunday school curriculum. So I know for some of you, you're going, Wow, that, that means we have to double our budgets. Well, I did tell you that the senior pastor's support is pretty critical on this one. How we got there is we laid it before our church. And I showed our church on a Sunday morning, this is the resource we want to give to parents of three-year-olds on how to bless their kids. Here's what we want to do to teach four-year-olds how to pray with their parents. And here's the resource we want to give. And I held each one of those resources up in front of our church, but then I told our church, we don't have the money to do this. We can either wait and slowly build this into our budget, and over the next five years, we'll add slowly and eventually we'll get here, or we're ready to start today, but we would need your help. And we took a special offering that Sunday. 
And on most Sundays, when, if we take a special offering, at best, in a church our size, we see about $5,000. On that Sunday, we took in $30,000. So that, I mean, our church just gave this overwhelming response because they want, I think a lot of our people have seen the disintegration of the family and what's going on in the home. And they responded in a way that said, we want to equip that home to once again be the primary place where faith is nurtured. So I want to encourage you. I think the resources are there, but we need to make a where your treasure is commitment. A fifth key to becoming a faith at home driven church is realize that everyone has a part to play. This is not a children's ministry thing. This is every ministry of the church is trying to become more faith at home driven. Our singles ministry is saying, how can we help our singles live out their faith at home? Our women's ministry is saying, how can we help our women live out their faith at home? Our men's ministry is looking at how we can equip men to do that. Every ministry of the church. In fact, even our worship ministry, where, you know, for years we've done those sermon notes where you fill in the blank, but all of a sudden we put on these faith at home lenses and we went, is that really equipping the home? What? What if, and we, we changed our sermon notes, and we still have the fill in the blanks, but now what we've added is take it homework to every one of those sermon notes where as they go home now, there's ongoing scripture for them to read based on what that message was about. There are some discussion questions for them to do with their family or friends, and then there's a couple of practical application things they can do to apply that message that week in their own home. And it only takes about 10 more minutes of, of my preparation time. But now we're, we're just, do you see? It's, we're infected with, with faith at home. It's, it's a, these are a set of lenses that we look at everything we're doing through. And every ministry has a part to play in being a faith at home driven church. And then the final key for becoming a, a faith at home driven church is a long-term commitment. I would love to say that there's a quick fix for families today or for getting faith back in the home, but we have to realize Satan has been at work for the last 20, 30, or 40 years. And he's used the busyness of people along with our programming as churches to just make things about what happens at church. But slowly over time, Satan has strategically taken Christ and Christ-like living out of the home. And he's made it so that it only happens up here at church in the God box but it's not happening in the home. Well, in order for us to get Christ and Christ-like living back in the home, if you think that's gonna be done in a 40-day program, I'm sorry, it's, it's just not gonna happen. We have to make a long-term commitment to this. And that's why I said it's gotta be a part of your strategy as a church. It's gotta be a part of how we do church. And so that I know that even if I were to leave and enter a missionary church tomorrow, the next senior pastor coming in this is a part of how Ventura Missionary Church does church. Faith at home is going to be a, a component for how this church moves forward, whether I'm the pastor here or not. And we have to make a long-term commitment to this so that we don't see this dropout rate after high school and so that we can once again see a faith that is sticking. So I just want to encourage you to think through this. I hope that these keys will help you. I hope you know there are six right now. It might change to seven or eight because I'm a pastor like you. I've, I'm rolling up my sleeves and, and we're, it's evolving in our church every single day. And I just want to encourage you to, I look forward to partnering with you and seeing how God's going to develop it in your church and together as churches and church leaders. I think God's on the move and I think he wants to get Christ and Christ-like living back in each and every home. And we just get to be a part of that movement. So I look forward to partnering with you. May God bless you as you become more faith at home driven.